What I'm, why am I saying all this? Because I'm going to say that the one that, that person who said that, that the Shalish Shavuos is not in the gear because it's that guy, that doesn't make sense. We see that the, I mean, when the one that's easy, it's easier to understand is the Shalayim Redu Bumas. The, the Pshad is we, we understand that the Ratzon Hashem is Shalayim Redu The Ratzon Hashem is Shalayim Redu Bumas. So you just can't do that. So according to that, all these movements, all these different Zionist movements that were fighting, these underground movements, they were fighting the British in order to have a state. They were doing against Das Chazam, and it definitely comes out that this Jewish state was born in sin because of the Merida Bumas, which is against Ratzon Hashem to do that. What could have been? Don't ask me what could have been. I once heard from a hachem that said, like you're saying now, the Medina is actually a momser. But a momser, Mekai mean but the momser. Yeah, once, once he's born, you treat him like every yid. He done, he's not any less than a regular yid. Lachayoso, for of course, they're Dine Kedima and the end of Horios. So also a coin called him the Levi. When you want to give stock and you have a coin and a Levi, you give stock to the coin before the Levi. See, I know a certain coin that he that he's right to give him stock. So we should give him before we give somebody else. And the same thing. So Yisrael called him the Mamze, but that doesn't mean the Mamze. Tamachachem. Good God so also, so in a chanam, you're right. If he's a Talmud Chochum, then he has, because he's a Talmud Chochum, he has a Kedima more than everything. Okay. No. Okay. So now, I'm saying like this. So it comes out. That Elavad is against the Rots nation. And you see by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka that he told the Biryanim, Go out and make peace with them. They didn't listen. Why? Because they believed in heroism. But Torah doesn't believe in heroism. There's no such thing as heroism. Memela. And, and, and the, what was I? I think that the main, the main problem is Gaiva. That's where it all comes from. No, what we're going to give in to the Romans? Yeah, you'll give in to the Romans. The pshat is, the pshat is the whole, the whole goal is just bend yourself down. And if Hashem is, this is how Hashem is running the world, that the Romans are ruling, so we have to bend to them. And that's what Zionism wanted, no, to go against that. How the whole Yisod of Yiddishkeit, which is Hachno, to the matzav that you're in, it happens to be the Goyim, but it could be any situation. It's like this, so you do like this, and you find many, many things. Like, like, <laughs> the same thing that... I, I, like he could talk a long time about like Hilo Hicks said, he answered that person on Arab Shabbos. What what do you have to answer him? And to me always brings that they ask uh, what uh, he couldn't say to him, come out to Shabbos. We'll discuss why the Africans have round heads and why they have thick feet and why the Chinese have have narrow eyes. Everything we'll discuss on Mutsai Shabbos. Now Hilo didn't do that. Because that's also a shemitz of kpei. That's what he said. B'shem the worker rabbi. It's already saying ah, ah, there's me and you. We, there's a conflict here, and we'll make a compromise. No conflicts, no nothing. Kulo shom shav. He comes to ask his questions about the African. So we'll answer that. Everything is. Then that's what the Brestle rabbi said. That it was his derech was lowly sakish club. That's the whole yesod of shaloyim redu bumus. Now. And the whole Yisod of Zionism is mamish the hefech of that, and it's, it's, it comes out. It's the hefech of the whole of the whole Yiddish guy that comes out. And, the, the shalo, and it comes out that the shaloyim redu bumis is mamish one of the Yisodis of Yiddish guy that comes out. Not just stam it's up as a, I got it to the end of ksuv. It's a it's a Yisod in everyday life. In fact. This is what I said in the beginning of the talk that it was 67 years ago in the produce. He's like a living in 67 years ago. But Bemis, if you think about the omek of it, and the idea behind it, it's mamish in, in everyday life. Let's say Lomosha right now, I'm sitting here with a jacket and it's hot and I'm sweating. And I'd like to have the air conditioner on. 
but I'm not married by Yeshua man. <laughs> so it's a shock because he's here to me. He doesn't want to that. Soon afterwards, we'll turn on to them. But now, while we're having this, he doesn't want it. He thinks the noise is going to bother. So you have to be nichna, shalom It's a shalom It's It's to get everyday life. And all kinds of things. Ah, they ain't stuff you could think the most on, on Mamish on Kotzad Vishal. But now, what I want to do is I just want to point out that this does, some people, they think that it, that it was, there was, they're so posh to them that it's not. No, Gail or Maisha, these Sholish Shmuz. Rav Cook, in fact, said it, mentioned it in passing. Which you you might you might say he only mentioned it in passing. No, I, I would say just the opposite. If he made, it was so pushy to him that it just came out in passing. That's what I mean to say. So Rav Cook said, here's a, a whole Torah about a if it could have done been time we'll say it, but but the main point of this whole stickle Torah here is it's in the Siddur Olashriya. Which this is the is the Siddur. In fact, I I've looked at I found a lot of Margolias in this, in his in this sefer because it's hard to understand his language. Well, you don't listen to the Chazanish and you mean the Agarot of Rav Cook. I, I like it. So. <laughs> so. Um, so. Like I don't love, I don't listen to the dietitian, and I eat a few more things than more than what he eats. Anyway, getting back, the whole piece over here is that that it's 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 Indian to strengthen the goof. I mean, it's one of the things he talked about to strengthen the goof, the chosek hachomori of the avdam Hashem. Yeah, we should be strong, we should be strong. I believe he wrote this before he became Rav of Yushalayim and one of was How before the scandal. Uh, I believe it was written uh, much this before. This called a leak. Uh, how do you know? Who, I heard where? from, uh, from the, where I have this piki is from, from Vayoa Moshe YouTube channel. He brings it and he thinks it was written much earlier. Uh, very interesting that that you sure may have found this Bikiyas, Tafka from the Vayol Moshe YouTube channel. You got the Bikiyas in Rav Kook. You see, Mamish, uh, how Hashem runs the world, like Rabbi Bauerwein says, God really has a sense of humor. So, so he says here we have to be strong. And he says, this, this strength that we need we should go in the derech of Chazal, we should go in the strength. In fact, he, he's talking on Aloshana Gemara and Brochus of Mem Aleph. What is it? Which How can we show our viewers Mem these Aleph, lines of Rav Kook here? Beige. And, and it's, it's this piece over here. And, and it's these words. Uh, Shinai and Zion in the first volume. And he says, means to be strong. That means we have to be strong, but we have to go. Man Yoivlon, the Gemara says, this is the Gemara in Brochus Mem Aleph. The Gemara is the Rav Chista said, Rav Huna, Man Yoivlon Nagre, the Parzl of Nishminach. I would like to have strong legs of iron that I can walk after you. I want to be strong. It's an Indian to be strong, but to go after Rav Huna, that's what that's in, that's what it was said on this lotion of iron legs. Dafke Raglaim. It's very interesting. He he, he 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 said I want to be strong. Like like I I don't want to. Once I walk to a long walk, I'll get tired and I'll stop. No, I want to go after Rav Huna. And you could be, you could say that the name, the name Huna is, is Hon and Aleph. Hon means riches, many, a lot, a reboot. That's a pshat. Hon is, is, is means, means money. It's, it's, it's used in modern Hebrew. It means a lot of money. In fact, Rav Huna was Takahashi, the Gemara, so the Gemara in time. 
Bahumbar Aleph, always to remember the Alufu Shalulam, where it all comes from. He's, he's the one. Leah Kesef, Leah Zov, Mashem. And this Gemara is talking about Gashmias, but being strong, big Gashmias. And for that, you, talk, you need money because they to eat good. Not a pas by melech. And not mine by Mishra, only to eat good. Pas by melech, Torah means if, if that's all you have. But, but there's an Indian to be mechazek the goof, and that's hon, but it has to be olive with the aluf, which all of you have to always remember. And that's where Rav Chista said, Alavai, I should be strong, I should go after you. And Rav Kooks, he didn't find any other example of not going in the dark of Shal Torah, not about using your strength, not in the dark of Shal Torah. The example was to be Marit Bumus. And that just was was his coolness was polluted. It just came out like that. And he could have said to hit people, to bother people, to push people on the bus, to, to push your way in line. He could have said all kinds of things to be nasty to people, to be aggressive. And he said, we have to go with dark so use our strength, but in the dark it'll turn not be murdered. Boom. That, that's what Rav Kut said. Look, look how it was so push it to him that this is the dark shelter. This is the dark shelter. Now, of course, they didn't ask him when they were when these underground movements were doing whatever they were doing. They didn't ask him what to do and how to do. But he, but they, but but he, yet yet on the other hand, you see, he himself was misgarabumus. Ah, this, uh, I mean, ah, he was misgarabumus also because he said on Tisha B'Av the the Chalutzim he used to make a march. That tarpat, uh, kid, was, well, a long time ago, and they marched to the Kosa and there was a tension over there. In that time, and they they they, were, they begged them, don't make the march this year. And Rav Cook said, no, we have to do it. It's our Kosa and family. So I mean, so he was misgarabumus. Uh, the shot is like this. I mean, so it's a steer him in a... Oh, he changed his mind people. like Rev. Fisher. <laughs> so the third is, he was a moody person. <laughs> How do I know? I don't really know. But I understand. First of all, he's the same mazel like me. He's he has some conjunct Neptune. Uh, which is one. Which uh, brings to moods. And, and Hashrad brings to also. Oh, it's that's a very what powerful shard. Oh, so his whole... All, all his writings were with Hashro. That means he was just writing what he felt, what the, the Ruach rested on him, and, and the Ruach really rested on him. And he wrote it floated. It has, a, it has a beauty to it. It has a certain beauty. That's why I read it. I look at it sometimes, especially the the Reish, the Reish Millionaire. There are certain pieces there that Ramesh. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel high. It gives you... It gives you a feeling like you're flying in the clouds, like you're above all the little things, all the little boxes that you get into. It's very good. It's like taking drugs in a certain way to, to read Rav Kuk's I'm not going to show that on drugs, kid. Oh, oh. So, so it, can, it can help you, raise you, make you feel like you're floating, uh, his writings. But that doesn't mean that he... He, he decided this is it. <laughs> in that time, he was in that mood, so he said, go ahead and march. And when he wrote this, he was in this mood. And he, and he said this, that's what I would say. And don't tell me I'm a mevazer Talmud Chochem, because I'm just making him into a human being. He wasn't a malach. Yeah, I think he wasn't a malach. And the Chazanish was, in fact, I think. The Chazanish was a Malch. I, I would he was a boss of a dumb. I don't mean that he wasn't a boss of a dumb, but he, he, the Torah purified him so much, he was in a certain sense like a Malch. In fact, they even say that when he finished Erevin, and it was, it was the time of the First World War, I think, and there were soldiers in the streets, there was a curfew, and nobody was allowed to go out. And there were soldiers standing all over guarding him. He went out. He didn't know what's going on. He went out in the street. Nobody did anything to him. He became a rav no near. He wasn't seen. He, the pshat, how, how could you believe it? Sounds like the stories that, like of, of old, of old tzaddikim. But the pshat is that the, the Torah can do such a thing to a person. Here we have six more seconds. So, so that's uh, we shall be zochet gula shleima. Amen.